Okay, in today's notes, we're going to start taking a look at nonlinear functions. And today's nonlinear function is the absolute value functions. At the top of the page, it states the definition of a nonlinear function, and they're just simply functions that do not, let's try that again, do not form a straight line. So the absolute value function, that's the V shape. Okay, so let's sketch a V. In order to graph the absolute value function, you need a minimum of seven points. And that's because you need the vertex or that turning point. And then we need one, two, three on the left, and then one, two, three on the right to create that V. If you only did, say, four, it might look something like that, connecting those four, and not the full V for the seven. Okay, we've already discussed how to graph the absolute value function, but I'm going to go through that again, but it is right here on your note page if you'd like to reference that. Okay, we just type it in, go to a table, and then graph. So let's take a look at the first one. So here we're going to graph three different functions. The first function is just the absolute value of x, which is named the f of x function. The second is 2 times the absolute value of x, which we're going to label as the g of x function. And then the last one, 1 half times the absolute value of x, and we're going to label it the h of x function. The table for f of x actually has the middle column to show the work. So let's actually take and plug those values in. The domain that I'm going to use Okay, it's from negative three to three. So let's fill those values in. So consecutive numbers starting with negative three up to three. So if we plug those values into the absolute value and take the absolute value of three, we get three. As the absolute value is just that number but positive. The absolute value of negative two is two. Absolute value of negative one is one. Absolute value of zero is zero. Absolute value of one is one. Absolute value of two is two. And absolute value of three is three. So the points that we're going to plot now, so the point, if you take a look at or get rid of that column and just look at the x, f of x, so this right here would be the point negative three, three. So let's plot that point. So left three, up three. And then negative 2, 2 is the second. Negative 1, 1. Right there at the origin, 0, 0, 1, 1. And you should see that symmetry. Okay? So the left half would fold on the right half. So let's take your straight edge and connect. Keep going with the V, stretch all the way across. And remember to put your arrows. The only time you don't put arrows is if they tell you to only graph from one x to the second x. Okay? Let's practice typing in, I'm going to graph a different color. Let's go to the graphing calculator and type in 2 times the absolute value of x. So go to y equals. Let's clear that. Press the math button go under the number column, and absolute value is the first one. And actually, because it says two times the absolute value of x, we have to put the two in first. So two math under number column, two times the absolute value of x. Second table, to look at our table of values. What we're looking for is the same y value on top, and bottom in that y column. And you'll see the other numbers match, or you'll see that symmetry, okay? With this point that's in the middle being the vertex, okay? So I'm gonna get rid of those lines. Let's go back to the table and look for the same number on top and the bottom. So I'm gonna scroll up, I'm gonna keep scrolling, and I see in the y column the six on top, six on the bottom. So the same domain from negative three to three 
with the range 0, 2, 4, 6. So copy those points down from your table. Whoops. Okay, let's actually, since we have the calculator out, type in the last one. So we'll have um, the tables to draw the graph. So I'm going to clear that. And this time it's one half, so make sure you use the parentheses. One half math absolute value of x. Second table. And um, there it is. There are the values for... Uh, y that are the same on top as bottom. So still from negative 3 to 3 is our domain. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Now it's centered right at the origin again because it's 0, 0. And then going back to the calculator it's 0 0.51, 1 1.5. So 0 0.51, 1 1.5. So I'm going to graph, well first I'm going to label this f of x. Now I'm going to graph g of x and I'll do that in orange. So negative 3, 6, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 2, 0, 0. And the right side is the same y, just opposite x. So now I'm going to graph that B. If you need more time, just pause it and start back up again. And this is labeled GX. Last one, I'll go back to the red. So still 0, 0. And I'm going to plot the whole number point. So that's negative 2, 1, 0, 0, and 2, 1. So negative 2, 1, 0, 0, and 2, 1. And we can just use those two points to graph the left and right side of the V. So in red, right straight through, right straight through. Okay. So those are the three, well, let's label this H of X. Now the last four bullets at the bottom um, deal with the graph. So absolute value functions, as we saw from above, they have a V-shape. So let's put in V-shape. The graph of G of X and H of X. So we have to compare that with the F of X. So let's look at the 2X versus 1 half X. The 2x was the g function. Now this orange, in reference to the blue, is closer to the y-axis. Looks like someone pushed it right up. Where the red, this function here, is pushed down towards the x-axis. So I'm going to say that the graph of 2 to the x, so this one, is narrower. Okay, and as I mentioned, it pushes toward the y-axis, which is also a stretch vertically. So you're pulling it up. Because of the one-half, that was a wider V. And as I said, that pushes towards the x-axis, which would be a stretch horizontally. What is the domain and range for all three graphs? Well, all three graphs continue left and right and don't ever stop. So if I look at the domain, it's going to start here and go left. It's going to start here and go right. The range starts here and goes up, okay? So that floor, that point right here 
is 0, 0. So the range is going to be all y values greater than or equal to 0, where the domain is all real numbers. Okay. In your calculator, graph a, this is on the back, graph a to the x equals negative absolute value of x. So let's go to the calculator. y equals, clear that. And we're just going to do negative absolute value of x and see what happens. So negative math under the number column, absolute value of x graph. Hmm. So that graph is still, that V shape is right at 0, 0 as the vertex, but it's going down. Okay, so this graph, the first bullet, the graph of a to the x equals negative x, because of that negative, it's going to open downward. And has the same shape, yep, with the vertex at the origin, that's correct, because the coefficient out front is a 1. So because we don't write the 1, that's why we don't see it. Um, and in this case, because it's upside down, our coefficient is actually negative 1. So instead of writing, and not f, but a of x equals negative 1 absolute a of x. We don't write the negative 1, we just write the negative. State when this graph is increasing and decreasing. So if I start here, I'm walking up, so this is increasing, and then we walk down, so this is decreasing. All in reference to, cut in half, an x value of zero. So it is increasing on the left, which would be x left, less than zero, and then decreasing on the right, so right is x greater than zero. The end behaviors, well, they're both pointing down. And then when is this graph, or when is this graph of the function negative or below the x-axis? Well, it's below the x-axis for all points but this one. So we have the left piece and the right piece. So since we have two pieces, we have two inequalities. So it's negative for x to the left of 0 or to the right of 0. Translations. A translation is a slide or a shift. So a translation of an absolute value uh, equation, which is the same as a function, will shift or slide the graph up, down, left, right. So let's take a look at this graph. So reading the directions, I realize it's under the record button. It says, given the graph of f of x equals absolute value of x, which is already graphed, Predict what will happen to a new function that they're labeling c of x if it's the absolute value of x minus 2. Okay? Um, if it's drawn on the same set of axes. Okay? I skipped a part though where it said to graph f of, um, or b of x, which is absolute value of x plus 1. And then we're going to predict what will happen. So if I go to the calculator, and let's clear this, absolute value of x, so math number absolute value of x, I have to type in the x, plus 1. Second table, and we're looking for, oh, it's right there. I have the same number of y on top as bottom. So negative 3 to 3, and it counts down 4, 3, 2, 1. So negative 3, and as I said, it starts from 4, cuts down to 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's graph those points. Negative 3, 4, negative 2, 3, negative 1, 
two, zero, one, one, two, two, three, and three, four. If you need a minute, you can pause and graph at your own pace. That's too fast. And this was B of X. Well, because of that plus one, there was a shift, and you can just look at the vertex right here, there was a shift up one. So if I put a minus two at the end, I, my guess is that it's going to shift down two units. Okay, so this note page or day of notes is going to be broken up into two videos as I'm recording this during your lunch and you're about to come back. So pick up on the second half of this video to do the next two pages.